What's up, Shorts Force? Welcome back to the channel. Now, I got something so cool. I, man, I didn't even know this thing existed until maybe a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago. It is an homage of a Blanc Pond that you didn't even know existed. I didn't until I started looking into this a little bit more. This is an homage of the Blanc Pond Lip 50 Fathoms. And this was back in the 1960s. Um, these are super hard to find and to come across. There's not a whole lot of information on them anyway. Came across this article online, super interesting. It goes into this particular watch, obviously not this one, but the, the one it pays homage to and talks a lot about it. And it's just really cool. Um, Lip being one of those French manufacturers back in the day and working with Blanc Pond. It's different from the 50 Fathoms, but you can see a lot of the design elements and the cues from it as well. Just super cool. Well, this review wouldn't be possible for you guys um, if it wasn't for Calvin Tan. Calvin is a guy that got in touch with me through YouTube and on Instagram. He created this group. We're called the League of Watches. It's a bunch of guys just trying to, um, you know, get some watches out there, do reviews, and let you guys see all the cool stuff that is coming or is out available now. Thank you, Calvin. I'm going to put his information in the description so you can go follow him as well on Instagram. This is actually a watch called the PH2 by Forsythes. Now, I got to just real quick, I was digging into this. So Forsythes, in case you guys didn't know, correct me if I'm wrong, by the way, but I think it's Greek mythology. Forsythes are actually the three daughters of Forces. And these three daughters, they were like, I guess, older women was kind of how they're described. They shared one eye and one tooth amongst the three of them. I guess the story goes that when the Gorgons were cursed by Athena, uh, they had kind of entrusted their location with these three women and they were keeping it a secret until Perseus had to go when he was hunting down or tracking Medusa or whatever, um, he had to go find these three daughters. And so Perseus ended up taking their eye or stealing the eye from them. He made a deal. Tell me where Medusa is located and I'll give you your little dirty eye back. And uh, yeah, they spilled the beans. So if you ever come across the Forsites, don't tell them any secrets because they're going to rat you out, bro. At least that's what I came across online. I don't know. I'm just, dude, I'm just sharing some knowledge. And it might be wrong, but you know what? It sounds good. And if I say it with confidence, <laughs> we'll just go on with our day. All right. Well, anyways, we're not here to talk about Greek mythology. We're here to talk about this watch, which is amazing. It also got sent with two straps from Vario. Vario from Vario. Um, Vario straps are really nice. And I'm going to show you this watch on these different straps as well. So, Thank you to Forsites for sending out the watch. Thank you to Vario for sending the straps. And thanks Calvin again for letting us take a look at this watch and making it all happen. Now, in case you're new to the channel, my name's Dave. May the Schwartz be with you. And hey, did you know it's a great day to wear a watch? It wouldn't be a Blanc Pond homage video without another Blanc Pond homage. This is my automatic 7Cs, which is an homage of the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe in blue. I'll have the description up here if you want to check out that video. I highly recommend it. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get into it. Guys, before we jump into the specs and features, I wanted to show you that this is the box the watch came in. It's just a simple plastic box with foam padding on the inside, but it protected the watch well in transit. You also see two straps in here, and we got to give a big thank you to Vario for including these straps with the watch to review. So we can do a few strap swaps and show you how they look on this Forsythes watch. Now, as you can see, we have a distressed vintage brown leather, which feels really nice. It is a flat Italian leather strap, so there's no padding has a nice slim profile. The other strap is an army green Cordura strap that has a nice cotton lining on the inside. And this strap is definitely going to give this watch that durable and more military type of look. I also like the reinforced holes for added toughness and longevity. Okay, let's get into the specs of this watch. We have a case diameter of 42 millimeters with the crown that's putting us right at around 45, just over 45 millimeters. The lug to lug height on this watch is 51 and a half millimeters. So thinner wrists may experience some overhang and the case thickness is right at 15 and a half millimeters with that high domed sapphire crystal. Now, while the domed crystal looks awesome from the side, it gives a lovely distortion when viewing at an angle. It is also highly reflective and acts almost mirror like you can see the reflections here very clearly with these studio lights as well. 
There does not appear to be AR coatings applied to this watch, but I could be wrong. In the sunlight, it can be a bit difficult to read quickly, so just something I wanted to point out. Now, as you see here, we are getting true sapphire crystal confirmation on the Diamond Selector 2. Before we move on to the looks, I wanted to point out quickly that the main differences between the Forsythes and the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms Lip watch is the crown on this watch has that small rounded end, but the original did not. It was just a flat crown. Also, the teeth on the original were much deeper and larger than this version. Another difference you'll see between the two is the hour hand on the original is slightly fatter than what we see here. I happen to like the matching in size on the Forsythes, but I guess if you're a purist, that may bother you a bit from the original. Another subtle difference is that on the second hand, the point on the counterbalance is more pointed on the vintage Blanc Pawn, and the rear tip of the arrowhead of the second hand is more diamond shaped, where we see on the Forsythes that these are more flat. Let's talk about this case shape. I love the illusion effect that we get from this case. At a first glance, looking straight at it, the watch looks like it's formed from one solid piece of metal without any lugs attached to the case. I get an industrial vibe from it when I see this, but as you turn the watch to its side, you can see the lugs curvature, and then we see how the top half of the case and the bottom half of the case meet in the middle. It's such a cool look, I do really enjoy it. And this case is all brushed finish in 316L stainless steel. You see that there's a screw down case back with indications that also closely mimic the original vintage design. There's also a screw down crown that has a thin coin edge to it. Now at the time of this recording, I was not able to get the details on the water resistance rating, but I'll post that in the description once I've heard back from the company. Then moving to the bezel, we have a 120 click unidirectional bezel that has zero back play, and gives a nice tactile feel and sound does have a ceramic insert with applied loom in the bezel and the design stays true to the original with these dots between the lines at 3, 6, and 9, and a larger rounded square indice at 12. The bezel initially was a bit hard to turn due to its thinner size, but as I've worn this watch, it has gotten easier to turn and also I've learned the best contact points where to touch the bezel to rotate it are actually between the lugs or on the edges outside of the lugs. A real treat that is worth pointing out is this very thin lip of high polish under the bezel and of the coin edge bezel itself. It's the only time that you'll see a flash or a glimmer of light bounce off the watch from the side. Now, if you're liking this review so far, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. Now, the dial is where you guys probably have most of your interest and rightfully so. I mean, look at the loom applied to these indices and hands. I don't know how many layers of loom are on here, but you can see how high they are raised off of the dial. We'll actually start with a loom shot as we discuss further. This is also a good time to hit that subscribe button if you haven't joined the Schwartz Force yet. And thanks for supporting the channel. Now this watch is a loom monster with a strong glow that lasts for many hours throughout the nighttime. There's easy legibility between the bezel and the hour markers, which helps when using the bezel feature at night. But I must admit the dots and the main 12 hour rounded square, they do take a bit of effort to differentiate between their size at a quick glance. Now the dial is a flat black and we see Arabic numerals at three, six, nine, and 12 with elongated triangles pointing downward in between each hour marker. The chapter ring is actually inside of these hour markers, not outside, which has a cool look, but will be covered by the minute hand when you check the time. So just keep that in mind. And lastly, we see the small triangles that are applied at three, six, and nine with a small square applied at 12. The watch is powered by the tried and true Seiko NH35 movement which allows for hand winding and hacking. There's no date window on this watch, but the NH35 does have a date complication, so there will be two positions on the crown with a ghost date function. Accuracy on this particular watch is around minus five, minus 10 seconds per day, as you can see here, uh, but the beat error is probably the main thing that kind of caught my eye. Um, usually we want to see that under you know, 0.5 milliseconds if possible. This can vary from movement to movement, so just something worth pointing out but seems to be hovering between minus five to minus 10 seconds per day. <laughs> Lastly, let's talk about the straps as I give you some wrist shots. The flat black rubber strap that this watch comes with is very comfortable. It matches with the dial perfectly. It's pliable, but has a rugged feel to it. And at 22 millimeters lug width, it gives a nice larger presence on the wrist. I think it balances well with the case dimensions on the watch itself. It has a simple tang buckle with a satin finish and a ribbed texture on the underside. Lastly, it has quick release spring bars, which add to that convenience factor right out of the box. 
And here we have a quick shot with the Vario Distressed Leather in brown. I love the color and that kind of vintage look. It wears well and I like the tapering of this strap because it gives a more casual vibe to the look of the watch. And the opposite would be said about this Cordura strap, which as you can see, gives this watch a more tactical and rugged kind of feel or vibe. Thanks again to Vario for sending these in with the watch and big thank you Calvin for making it all happen. I'm gonna include links to their social media and their websites in the description. So be sure to go check them out, send them some love. Let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on this watch guys? I'm really looking forward to seeing your feedback and as always, may the Schwartz be with you and I'll see you at the next one. Take care.